YouTube. This is Alex from Computer Headquarters. Today I'm going to show you how to use an Asus Raider Express, PCI Express SSD with your uh, Windows 10 installation. Uh, according to the internet, this is not something that you're able to do, but uh, it's actually very easy. So we'll show you right now. So here's the box that the Raider Express comes in. Um, we actually have these in stock right now, which is why I'm making this video. We've had a lot of customer complaints saying that it doesn't work with Windows 10, so they want to return it, um, which has prompted us to make this video to show our customers how to use it. It is a little bit of an unusual process to make it work, so let's get into it. Um, let's open the box up. This is a card that was brand new before we opened it. Um, but we did use it for for testing, so we know that it does work. Um, so you could technically say this card is now used. So you can see this is the 240 gig model. Uh, I believe that this came in a 120 gig and a 240 gig one at the time of release. Um, and this does plug into your motherboard, kind of similar to a video card. Um, and you do, from my understanding, you do want to use a full 16x slot. So looking at the motherboard we have, we're going to use right here. Uh, when I say 16x slot, that is this size slot right here. That is a full size slot that a video card would normally go into. Um, I've heard reports of people saying that when you use something like this 1x slot right here, that it does not work as well. Um, I have not verified that myself, but if you've got the x just use your X16 slots, just go with that. Uh, so for testing, we've got some pretty basic stuff here. Uh, we've got a Maximus 8 Ranger motherboard. Uh, it's a nice board, nothing fancy. It's not the newest um, tech or anything like that. It's a couple years old. And uh, we have just a four gig stick of DDR4 memory, something basic there. We've got an Intel Celeron G3930, super budget CPU. Uh, we have a 500 watt Cooler Master power supply here, it's nothing fancy. And then we just have uh, a USB stick here, which is where we're going to have our Windows installation housed, uh, as well as uh, an HDMI cable going to this Alienware 25 inch monitor right here, uh, as well as this one USB cord, which is a, uh, a hub that will go to our keyboard and mouse. Um, so anyway, uh, let's install the card. I'm going to uh, rotate this so the card can lay off the side of the desk. Okay, yeah, there we go. Seated all the way down. And we're going to go ahead and hit the start button here. Sorry about that. Got a uh, cable hitting the fan. And let's see what we've got on the screen over here. We're going to want to go directly into BIOS. Now on a, an Asus uh, motherboard, delete is the, uh, the key you want to press. If you don't have Asus motherboard, I can't tell you exactly which key it is you're going to want to press. All right, so I'm going to change the camera here. There we go. Okay, so on this menu, we're going to want to go to boot. And then we're going to want to scroll. Now, if you don't have an Asus motherboard or if you have a different Asus motherboard, this could be a little bit different, so I apologize, but the be, the be, uh, <laughs> the main things here are that you need to have CSM, Compatibility Support Module, and you need to go into that, and you need to go to Enabled, which I've already clicked, I already had it ready to go, so you can see there it says Enabled. I'm going to go back to the previous page, and the next option down is Secure Boot. You want that to say Other OS. I'm going to show you the other options here. It's just Windows UEFI module. Now what we're doing is we're booting 
into legacy with this drive. And then after we're done, we're switching it back over to UEFI. Uh, I may have not said that exactly accurate, but it's kind of the idea of things here. Um, but basically, yeah, we're gonna be going into legacy mode. Um, so before you restart anything, there's the next thing we have to talk about, which is the actual drive itself. So there is a switch on the drive itself right here, and there's two different modes. There's duo mode and there's UEFI. Duo mode is actually what gives you the legacy option, and that's what we need to be in right now. So if you're following along, you're, you've got CSM turned on enabled, you've got other OS selected on your BIOS for secure boot, and if you haven't done duo mode, do not do it right now while the drive is on. Turn off your computer, or sorry, save the BIOS. And then you can turn off your computer once it reboots. Then you can flip the switch while the computer is off. And then you can reboot it. So I've already got that switch flipped over. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to save my BIOS options. And the computer is going to restart. Now, this data traveler drive right here, USB stick, has just the basic Windows 10 installation files on it. Um, you'll see this should pick it up immediately with, without me needing to press any buttons about where it's going to boot from. It should just go right into trying to load Windows. So, as I was saying, it's just the ISO that you get from Microsoft's website. There's nothing fancy here. It's not a modified anything or other it's just straight from the microsoft website as you can see there's the spinning dots which means that it's grabbing the flash drive information and all right we've got the uh, screen here to start setting up windows so i'm going to click next i'm going to click install now i'm just pressing enter on the keyboard but that's the same thing It's asking me for a key. I am just, because I'm doing a demonstration, this is not a real computer that we're gonna be using or selling. I'm not gonna be using a key. So I'm just gonna press, I do not have a key for this particular case since it's a demonstration. I'm gonna select Windows Home for now. Now this next step, sorry, I need to, I need to accept this. I'm, I'm, I just press A, it's a shortcut. If you press A, it accepts it immediately, and then I press Enter. And then I'm gonna press Custom. So there's two options here. There's Upgrade and there's Custom. We wanna do Custom. Now this is the really big important step where a lot of people mess up. Oftentimes when people are at this step with a new drive and they're making a new system, they're just gonna click Next. And normally that's what you're supposed to do, but my understanding from the, the forms that I've read about installing Windows 8 on this exact unit is that you want to actually click New, which is going to partition the drive. When you click Next, it's supposed to partition the drive as well. I don't know why this is different, but everyone has said that this is what you have to do to make it work. So I'm just, it's one extra click. And then you, then you select the biggest partition, which right here is the 228 gigs. So now I'm going to click Next. You're going to see Windows is loading here. I will uh, pause the video um, and uh, resume it once we're at a good spot. All right, guys, you can see that we're just finishing up here, almost done with the Windows installation. That was only about five minutes. Um, so pretty quick, uh, you know, with really low spec computer too. So cell arm processor and only four gigs of RAM. So this drive is actually pretty fast. Um, it's just restarting now and my understanding from the complaints that I've read on the internet about this not working with Windows 10 is that I wouldn't have even been this far with the problems that people were having. Um, but there are still some more steps we have to do before we're completely done. So we want Windows to finish setting itself up to the point where you would be getting to the blue screen that says, what language do you want? Um, so we probably still have a few more minutes for that to finish, but why don't I talk about the things that we're going to do next so that when we get there, we'll, uh, we'll be caught up. So um, while this is doing this stuff, we're going to talk about those things. So the things that we did before, including this switch, 
that we talked about right here and the BIOS, we're gonna go change all of those, the three things, we're gonna change them all after we're done with the computer turned off as well. So we're going to, once the Windows is done and it gets to that blue screen, we're gonna turn off the system, we're gonna do a hard turn off. So with this motherboard, I have a start, stop, button, on off button right here with that start button. So we're gonna turn off completely. Uh, if you don't have one of those, you could use a screwdriver. If you have a case that's connected to your case, you press the button, or you could always flip the switch on the back of the power supply if you really want to. Um, we're going to do that. We're going to restart the computer. We're going to go back into BIOS. We're going to change the CSM to turn it off. The compatibility support module will be turned off. Uh, we will also be changing the secure boot onto the option of Windows UEFI. We'll save the, the BIOS, and then we will also turn off the computer again one more time, flip the switch here, back to UEFI mode, and we'll be uh, ready to go back into Windows and make a, um, a login account and everything. It does look like Windows is finishing up right now. I think it just finished. So we should be getting that blue screen I was mentioning a minute ago. Sorry about the angle, by the way, just this monitor was convenient to use on the desk laid out like this. All right, so just a moment, it says. It's doing the blue screen I was talking about, setting up windows. It's basically done with everything. All right, so that was the screen I was talking about. So now I'm gonna go turn off the system. Okay, it's off. I'm gonna turn it back on. I'm gonna be pressing the delete button on the keyboard to get back into BIOS. You can hold it. You don't have to you don't have to do rapid fire pressing like I do often, but you can just hold it if you want to. You know, some some people like to do it both ways or whatever. It reminds me of crossing the street, pressing the uh, walk button. Some people like to press it nonstop. Some people like to press it once because that's all you have to do. All right, so we're in the BIOS, going back to boot the boot option here. Scrolling down on this motherboard to CSM, we're turning that dis to disabled. It's giving us a warning, doesn't matter, we're going to say we're good with it. We're going back a screen, we're going to secure boot. We're switching this to Windows UEFI mode. Now we're done. I'm pressing F10 to save, clicking OK or enter. Okay, now the system's going to reboot. And I'm going to be turning it off in just a minute. Yep, go ahead and turn it off again. System's off. We're finally going to be flipping the switch one more time. So now you see that little light came on there. We're in UEFI mode on the SSD itself. Press the button again. And, okay, so now we have restarted the computer, flipped the switch, we have the BIOS set to CSM disabled, we have the secure boot set to Windows UEFI mode. And now we're back, just turning the computer back on and we're going to set up Windows. I'm doing US US because that's what I want. I'm skipping this. Um, I'm going to skip this because we don't have Ethernet connected at the moment or internet on this motherboard. I'm going to just call this, uh, so our company is called Computer Headquarters and our website for, for shopping related stuff is chqstore.com. So I'll just call this CHQ store. <laughs> and sorry, the angle. CHQ store. I was actually typing that. I know the angle made it look like I wasn't. So next, I'm not throwing a password on here because we're going to be erasing this. I'm not going to chat with Cortana today. And I usually like to turn all of these off. 
I'm not telling you that you should because I don't want Microsoft to be mad at me. But today I just feel like I'm in the mood of turning them off. Some days maybe you will be too. And we probably have a couple more minutes of setting up the system. I will pause the video once more and resume once we're on the desktop. All right, guys, you can see that I am in Windows. This is a real Windows installation. Um, I will just quickly show you that we've got the uh, SSD showing up as a real drive. It's right here, 222 gigs. This wasn't some bait and switch. You, know, you can see the drives installed here. The LED light is on. This thing looks really cool. Um, we're still in the UEFI mode with that light there. And uh, yeah, everything's good to go. Um, this is ready to be used. We did this test yesterday uh, for the first time because of the complaints we had, as I mentioned, and we let the computer run overnight. Uh, so it's been on for over 24 hours. It, sorry, I should say it was on for over 24 hours before I uh, I wiped the drive completely to do this demonstration for everyone. Uh, but it's rock solid and it's actually really fast. So um, there you have it. There's the guide. I'm going to do a quick summary right now about what we did, okay? So the drive came with no data on it. It was completely wiped. We used a flash drive to put a fresh copy of Windows 10 ISO that we got directly from Microsoft's website. We put that onto this flash drive. It was formatted com completely clean before that was done. Um, we went into the BIOS options. We changed CSM. We made sure that it was enabled. We went to secure boot option and made that say other OS. We then re, uh, saved those settings. Um, we turned off the system and made sure that the switch here was sell, selected to duo mode. We uh, then started the system back up with the flash drive, booting from the flash drive. We uh, went through the Windows installation menu and we chose the option of uh, new on the drive. Once we got to the part where we select which drive we want to install to, we click new rather than clicking next immediately. So we partitioned the drive basically right in front of our face so we could see the partitions. We selected the biggest partition and clicked next. We let Windows load through and finish up. We then uh, turned the computer off again um, or restarted it, however you want to say it. We went back into BIOS after that was done. Um, we changed CSM back to um, disabled. We then went to Secure OS and changed it to Windows UEFI mode only. We saved those settings. We turned the system off. And then we flipped the switch back here again over to UEFI mode. Um, and that was it. Then we turned the computer back on again, and we were able to get right into Windows. So all of that stuff just took me less than 20 minutes while making this video on the fly in one take. So you can totally do this at home. It's easy if you follow the steps step by step. I uh, hope you guys have fun with your Raider drives, and I hope that you enjoyed the video. Sorry, it's, uh, I'm new at this, but uh, give me some slack here, right? Thanks.